And today we're looking at uh, two of Paul's letters, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians. Uh, Thessalonica, some of my uh, Middle Eastern friends pronounce it Thessaloniki, but I can't quite get my southern tongue around that, so I keep saying Thessalonica. It's one of the cities in Macedonia, uh, the area to the north part of Turkey on the trade route to, fit to Philippi. And Paul immediately shared when he was there for three Sabbath days, so three weeks in the synagogue as recorded in Acts 17, 1 to 4. This is a place where Paul and Silas were accused of turning the world upside down. The description of the Jews there uh, says that they were envious of the Christians and they enlisted some vile men to attempt to hurt Paul and Silas and cause them to leave at night for Berea, which was the next stop on their missionary journey. We need to think of these Christians as though they had not heard the New Testament, which they didn't have. So Paul is quickly writing to instruct them in basic theology, which includes the return of Christ, the call to holiness, and the call to vigilance. Let me outline the book of 1 Thessalonians for a minute. The first chapter is the introduction and a thanksgiving. Paul always starts his letters as much as possible with mentioning some of those who are with him and those to whom he's writing. Uh, he then reestablishes in his letter his relationship to the Thessalonians. And he says to them, when you finally get to chapter 4, your living should be to please God. And then as you move into the meat of chapter 4, he says, I want to tell you about the people who died in Christ. Perhaps some were martyrs. Perhaps some uh, were those who had been part of the church that were older and just have died and were buried. Uh, but then he talks about the rapture, the calling up of God's people uh, into the air and the dead in Christ rising and meeting together in this pre-return state of our Lord. He goes on in the fifth chapter to talk about the day of the Lord and the final instructions uh, that we're going to receive about that. 2 Thessalonians uh, is obviously Paul's second letter to the church at Thessalonica, and he's writing to re-emphasize some of the things that he said, which he's not sure they got or they fully understood. One of the things he adds in the second chapter is the man of lawlessness, which we would refer to and uh, align with the Antichrist, in the book of Revelation. So in the second chapter, Paul begins by saying, stand firm and pray through persecution. And then when he says that, he follows it up with something very interesting. Chapter three, verses six to 15, he's warning against being lazy. And then he ends his book with final greetings. You and I usually don't think about standing firm and praying, and then having to be cautioned about laziness. But Paul was saying, hey, you've got an important call in your life. You are to follow Christ. Don't be slack about what you're doing. So the books of First and Second Thessalonians have the theme, Christ is coming quickly. In the second book, he's saying, the return of Christ is a future event. It's a certain event. It's swift and glorious. Now, there's no contrast in those two. In the first book, he's saying Jesus is going to return. And as far as I'm concerned, he says, it's quickly. In the second book, he said, don't worry if some time passes because it's certain that Christ is going to return, and when he returns, it's going to be a swift judgment that's going to come 
but for us it's going to be glorious it's going to be a time of rejoicing because we can see the face of Christ the key verse of the first book of Thessalonians is now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely first Thessalonians 528 the purpose of Paul's writing was to, to these people to say, I want you to be holy. That's the work of the Holy Spirit in your life, to make you like Jesus. And so he prays that the Holy Spirit would sanctify them, the God of peace would sanctify them completely. And then in the second book, his most critical prayer for the people of Thessalonica was, now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Second Thessalonians, the second chapter, verses 16 and 17. So Paul is consistent in his message about the return of Christ that he wants these people to know and to be ready to experience. So these two books um, are about the return of Christ. That's the central theme. The key action of 1 Thessalonians is, since Christ may come at any moment, we should live productively, faithfully, and expectantly. The second book says the second coming of Christ, or the day of the Lord, which is a reference to the Old Testament, should not provoke idleness, that is laziness, but action, not speculation, but sanctification. So Paul's saying, don't sit around being lazy, talking about theology, practice it. Move out in sharing Christ with those that are around you. The key prayer we might say for the book of 1 Thessalonians is, Though I don't know the day, help me, Lord, to live as if you're coming today. Isn't it great to live in the anticipation of seeing someone you love? I don't know what it's like for you. I know sometimes when my wife has been gone on a trip or my kids have been away for a while and I hear that they're coming, I want to be at the front door waiting for them to say, welcome home. It's good to see you. I want to be at the front door of the New Testament waiting to say to Jesus, welcome, welcome to my heart again. Welcome to my joy in being united with those that you have made mine in Christ and I want to be with you forever. So the prayer for the second book then is, help me to see beyond the distractions of today to the glory of tomorrow. Do you know that joy? Are you looking forward to the return of Christ? I hope you are. It's going to be a great day when we see Jesus.